I'm willing to forgive your sins. Though your sins are like crimson, I will cleanse them. They will be white as snow. So that's how wonderful God is. So we read the Bible as it is. And Jesus tells us to do things and He gives us all kinds of promise. He said, dwell in me and I will dwell in you and then you will bear much fruit. And then you dwell in me and my word dwell in you and then whatever you ask of the Father, He will give you. So Jesus gives us all kinds of wonderful blessings, promises. So when you see these promises, we'll say, wow, God, you're so wonderful. The more we understand these promises, the more, more we'll appreciate God. And also, um, when we look at how God has blessed us in the past, we'll say, thank you, Lord, you have blessed me in the past. And also we examine ourselves, why don't I trust God? Why don't I trust God? Why do I, why do I, uh, uh, do I why don't I have a good relationship with God? What are, what are the things that blocks my relationship with God? And then we examine our lives and then ask God to help us. And then God will bless us. God will, you know, examine our lives and then uh, change our life. So that's how that we read the Bible more uh, to understand God's nature. We pray more to enjoy God. Now, to have strength from the Lord. We don't pray like this. Oh Lord, have mercy upon me. Lord, heal me. Lord, give me strength. Give me money. Give me, you know, just asking. When people ask, they don't necessarily feel joyful and peaceful. But we can rejoice in the Lord and praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're so wonderful. You're kind to God. You're a wonderful God. Praising God, loving God is the way to have strength. God, you're full of mercy and kindness. I love you. I like you. I adore you. I enjoy you. I want you. So when we pray like this, God is happy with us because the Bible says that, you know, for those who love Him, that the, the blessings of God will be things that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and the human mind cannot think of that He'll prepare for us. So, so the way is to enjoy God, to count His blessings, to relax in God, to look at all the blessings of God and say, God, you're so wonderful and take care of our sins and problems, whatever hinder us. Whatever hinder us, we want to take away those things and then repent and change our life. Now it's very important when we write how, it's very important how to be connected to God, how to connect to God and to have strength from God. Some passages, Matthew 6, 14, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So here the passage says that when we forgive people their sins, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if we do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will the Father forgive our trespasses. So God will forgive us. God will forgive us when we forgive people. And God is very happy. God is very happy that uh, we forgive people and God will bless us. Okay, examples. Many people cannot forgive. I have, I have seen many Christians. They talk about how terrible some people are and they are not happy with them, that they are angry with them, and they uh, complain about people. That there are Christians who always complain about other, uh, complain about other Christians, about other people. So those are examples of people cannot forgive. And when they cannot forgive people, what happens is that they will have a lot of bitterness, a lot of anger, a lot of frustration. This passage is very simple and clear. And let's look at the outline here. And then the nature of God. God is a forgiving God. God is willing to forgive us. God is happy to forgive us. And the grace of God, He forgives us our greatest sins. And God is pleased with those who forgive others and He will forgive those who forgive others. So God forgives our greatest sin. Any great sin we have, God is happy to forgive us. And He's pleased with those who forgive other people. When we forgive other people, God is very happy with us. And He'll forgive us. He'll please with us and He'll forgive. So God gives us a heart of forgiveness. Actually, 
when we have a close relationship with God, we will have a heart to forgive people. When we have a good relationship with God, God will change our hearts so that we want to forgive people. That is how God is. God has this wonderful nature. When He dwells in a person's heart, He will change a person's life. He will, he will, um, he will uh, bring forgiveness to the person. Okay, why is it hard to forgive? Because when people look at other people's faults, when people uh, always count people's faults, then they will be always angry with people, then they're unhappy with people, and then they will, you know, what happened is they will, it's hard for them to forgive. So when people, okay, now, um, so why is it hard for people to forgive? Because people get used to looking at people's faults, they count people's faults, and so they, it's hard for them to forgive. And warning, when we don't forgive others, we are not living out God's nature and we could face God's judgment. And then how we can forgive other people. So the way to forgive other people is first count how God has forgiven us so many times, how we have sinned so many times, and God has forgiven us, and God continues to work in our heart with the Holy Spirit. When God continues to work in our heart with the Holy Spirit, moving us with the Holy Spirit, proves that it proves that God is still working in our heart. God is still compassionate toward us. He continues to speak to us. So we count all those blessings and say, wow, God is blessing me. And then we um, see our, uh, what are hindering us, what hinder us to have uh, to forgive people. For instance, our, when we look at other people's faults, and then we say, Lord, if you look at my faults, I have nowhere to stand in front of you. I cannot stand in front of you. So I, I don't want you to look at my faults, so I will also not look at the faults of other people. So we examine ourselves and take care of our problems in our lives so that we, uh, so that we can have the heart to forgive. And then we have a close relationship with God. And then, uh, so when we praise God and love God, then the joy of the Lord will come. We say, God, you're so wonderful. You have forgiven given me so many times. You have blessed me so many times. I'm so I'm very thankful. I want to enjoy you. I want to love you. I want to uh, bless other people. I want to forgive them. When I forgive them, these people will be blessed and I can help them to change when I forgive them. And then I will be blessed by you also. So these are some ways, uh, whatever way we can think of. And now I've talked about four ways to talk about how. Okay, how first look back at how God has blessed us. Look at how God has blessed us. That's one point. And the second point is um, have a close relationship with God. Praise God and love God and then we'll have strength. And then third, examine our hearts. What are some reasons why we sin? And then ask God to forgive us and change our life. And then four, when a situation arises, what do we do? When we are angry with someone, what do we do? We can first calm down. We can pray to God. We can say, well, he has been hurt by people so many times, therefore he, he's angry with people, so therefore I want to forgive him and I want to uh, bless him. So these are four areas that we, uh, the how. First is, area is, first is, look back at how God has blessed us in that area. And then second, have a close relationship with God to have strength. Third, to examine our heart, our life, how we have sinned, and then ask God to change us. Four, when a situation arises, what do we do? Okay, and then grace, I've talked about four areas of grace. First is His nature. Second is His grace toward us. Third, His transferable grace, that how we can train other people to forgive. And four, uh, how He will bless us and reward us when we obey Him. So, in the area of forgiveness, the nature of God is He's a forgiving God. And the grace, 
He forgives us many, many times. It's transferable grace. We can train other people. He gives us the ability to train other people to, um, to forgive other people. And then reward. He will reward us when we forgive other people. And God is very happy with us when we forgive other people. So if you forgive, uh, follow this outline, it's not so hard to write the sermon to motivate people. Now, after you mature, you don't have to follow this all the time. But this is a good way to follow. And the two areas we want to concentrate is one is nature and grace, and then the other is how. These are the two areas we want to concentrate in that we must have. Okay, now Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. Okay, so here Jesus said, don't lay up for yourself treasure on earth, where the moth and rust can destroy the treasure on earth. And today, nowadays, uh, the uh, different thing, uh, the depreciation, depreciation of money, you know, the money can go away. And political change, the money can go away. So the money doesn't stay forever on earth. But lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. That we, if we give, give offering to God, the money is stored up in God, in heaven. Then there, there's nothing that can take away the money. And then the thieves cannot break into steel. And then God will reward us. Um, when we faithfully tithe to God and give offering to God, God will be very happy and God will bless us. Okay, so here are the outline examples. Many Christians don't tithe faithfully. Many Christians, they think that it's a loss for them if they tithe, if they give offering. So many people, now it's not true that only the poor people don't give offering. It's many rich people too. They have a lot of money, but they're not willing to give. And if the Christians are faithful to give offering, the church will have a lot of money to do ministry. And then, nature of God. God owns everything. He is a caring God. God owns everything. Everything it is, in hand, is in His hand. He can bless Africa. If all the Christians in Africa pray together and love God and obey God, God will bless your countries. So please believe that. God can bless the country. Even though there are negative forces, there are different problems, there is corruption, but still God's grace abounds. God's grace is stronger. So God has everything. And He's a caring God. He cares about the Christians who love Him and follow Him. And then grace of God. God remembers our offering and will keep our offering in heaven forever and will reward us. So God will keep an offering on, in heaven and He will forever reward us. So as I talk about nature and grace, there are four areas again. First, the nature of God. He's, he owns everything. He is a giving God. He is a caring God. So, and then grace. God has given us many, many blessings. I will send you the, the slide later. This slide of the different points of God's nature uh, and grace and how okay and then the third point is transferable grace that we can help other people train other people to give offering faithfully and then it will change our life and then fourth he will reward us when we when we uh, give faithfully so the four four areas is first his nature second is uh, his grace toward us Third is transferable grace to bless other people. And fourth is reward and blessings. Okay, why many Christians don't have faith to give offering faithfully? This is for us to understand, for people to understand why they don't have the, uh, the faith to give offering so that it will speak to the people's heart why they cannot do it. Because they think that when they keep the money, they will have more money. But actually, it's not true. When they keep the money, they actually will lose money. 
Christians who are faithful in offering, they actually they are provided by God more than Christians who are not giving faithfully. When we give faithfully, God will bless our whole life. God will give us more joy and strength. God will give us provision. God will give us wisdom to serve God, to help more people, to bear fruit. Okay, and then warning. When we just keep our treasure on earth, our treasure will perish. So this passage says that it will perish. When we have one serious sickness, all the money could be gone. When a person has cancer, no matter how much money he has, it's useless to him. So money will go away on earth. So that's the warning. And how? Okay, How can we have strong motivation to offer to God faithfully? First, uh, think back how God has blessed us. Okay, Remember the four points. Now you can use your thinking to find different ways to say how, but I'm suggesting the four points so that it's easier for you. The first is to think back how God has blessed us when we offer to Him in the past. How God has blessed us so much. So that will motivate us to continue to give offering. That's the first point. And the second point is have a close relationship with God. When we have a close relationship with God, then we'll have more joy and more strength. And we'll have faith that, yes, Lord, the Lord will provide for me. And then the third point is handle the problem in our heart. Do we have fear that we might lose the money? Do we have fear that, that God will not provide for us? So when we have the fear, how can we handle it? The way to handle it is to think about how God has blessed us in the past. So if God has blessed us in the past, He will also continue to bless us. He will continue to help us. So we don't want to look at the problems now. As God has blessed us in the past, He will continue to bless us in the future. So, so take care of that fear inside us. And the fourth point is uh, when a situation arises, when we have no money, when we have the fear, what do we do? Then we say, Lord, you have been faithful to me in the past. Will you stop being faithful? You won't. So help me to have the faith in you that I can give to you faithfully and you will continue to bless me. So uh, these are four ways. Now you can use other ways to, to motivate people uh, to give offering. Okay, now Matthew 6, 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? So the birds, God take care of the birds. So if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O you of little faith, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So if God will provide for the birds and the grass, He will also provide for us. And when we seek His kingdom, seek God's kingdom means two things. First, we want more people safe, and we help people to believe in Jesus. We preach the gospel, and we pray for the workers to go out to reap the harvest, to bring more people to salvation. And the second meaning of the kingdom, seek the kingdom, is to let God be the king in our hearts, in our life. Because where God is the king, there is His kingdom. Where people don't obey Him, then His kingdom doesn't come there. So when we obey Him, then we let God be the king and seek His righteousness. That means to have His his uh, righteous robe on us, the forgiveness of God and His righteous robe on us, and also we obey God, then all these things shall be added to you. So when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to us. So the outline examples, many people worry, and so they don't give. And the nature of God, He owns everything. He is gracious to give. Everything is in His hand. He, will, he is gracious to give us and the grace of God. He cares about the birds and the grass. You know, there's so many birds in the world. Everywhere in the world we can see birds that, uh, that God care, cares about so many birds in the world. 
Why does he do that? Because God just cannot stop caring. He's a loving God. He cannot stop loving people and animals. He cares about all the people and all the animals. So he'll provide for us. When we seek God's kingdom and his righteousness, he'll provide for us richly. And then why many people worry about and don't seek God's kingdom and righteousness? They think that they can get money in their own way. They think that they can use their own method to get the money so they don't uh, seek God. They don't, uh, they don't trust in God's provision and warning. Worrying will bring more problems. When people worry, they have more problems. And then how? How can we trust God more and seek God's kingdom and righteousness? That first, we see how God has blessed us in the past, so we we'll continue to trust Him. Second, we have a close relationship with Him, then we have more faith in Him. Thirdly, then we examine our heart, our worry, our fear. Does it do any good? And we look at people who, do, who don't worry and who trust in God. Do they have less? So we see that, wow, there's no reason for me to worry. I can trust in God and relax in God and rejoice in God. And then God will continue to bless me. So examine ourselves and take care of our problems. And then when the problems arise, when we have shortage of money, then we trust in God. Lord, I trust in you to provide for me. And we, we just thank God. You know, I have gone through times like that. I've gone through times that I did not have any income. And I just continue trusting God. God, you will open the way for me. You will have a way to bless me. I ask God to help me. I ask God to provide for me. And God, eventually, He helps me. 